Um, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Marisa Allen. I'm the HR manager here in Roscommon University Hospital. Uh, regrettably, my colleague Brian and Mullen from Port Jacob is unable to present today, so um, I'm going to give you an overview of the, the RPA automation process that we're hoping to uh, roll out here in Scotland and Port Jacob. Um, I'd like to thank yourself, Ross Martin, and the digital team also for the opportunity to speak today. The next slide, please, Ross. So, like I said, the RPA process that Port Jacob and the Scotland University Hospital are currently working on um, is the automation of the sick leave process across both sites. Uh, so currently, like in a lot of HR departments, our sick leave process is primarily paper based. It's very labour intensive um, and the input is required across multiple independent systems. So we have an ADP system, an Excel system, an email and a SAP. The sick leave process is compatible for automation in that it's high volume, it's repetitive and it has very structured tasks. Um, from a national point of view in HR, we have three measures that we monitor absenteeism and compliance rates on. So we have the percentage absenteeism rate, which nationally, as everyone is probably aware of, it's at 3.5%. We also have a percentage number of return or review meetings, which are held. And we also review a KPI on the percentage number of staff returning from absence per month. Uh, next slide, please, Ross. So this diagram will illustrate um, the current certified sick leave process in the place. So when an employee is absent for two days or more, on the third day, the cert is submitted to the line manager. The line manager then in turn will validate it and send it to the HR department. Um, there in the HR department, they will check that it's compliant with the managing attendance policy. So they ensure that it's signed by a medical practitioner, that they have an IMC number on it, and they have the correct dates of absence on it. If the cert is compliant, then the HR will input the cert into the ADB system. If the employee is entitled to sick pay and within their sick pay limits, uh, then there's no action further required. So the cert will be saved onto the therefore system. If the employee, however, is approaching their sick pay limits, then HR will calculate the sick pay and determine whether they're entitled to full pay or half pay and what dates they, that they're entitled to it. Um, from there, a letter will be issued by the HR department to the line manager and the employee informing them of same, and the letter will be saved to the therefore system. The line manager then completes a 102A form, which is submitted to payroll, and the adjustment is made to the employee's salary accordingly. As you can see, it's quite a lengthy process, um, which approximately it takes about 12 minutes for an employee to actually process when you consider the amount of systems that's involved in this. So in automating it, we can see a huge value. Next slide, please, Ross. So in automating the sick leave process, it will result in um, having more motivated staff. So as we release the HR staff from the mundane task of data entry and allocate them to a more meaningful task, for example, if it's identified that an award or a unit that we have a lot of sick leave related to back issues, then the HR staff would be able to engage with that unit manager and maybe run a campaign around manual handling or safe work practices and maybe organise training and try and establish the reasons why those people are out with the back injuries. Um, also from a payroll and finance issue, uh, having a standardised sick leave automated approach will definitely be a lot faster. Uh, the bot, as we know, is no downtime, it's consistently working 24-7, so it reduced the number of overpayments that we would see as well. Um, it will also empower the line manager to do more real-time return to work meetings, identifying staff issues uh, earlier. Um, also, it will enable the effective workforce planning, so we'll be looking at a um, number of staff available to work versus um, the service demands. So next slide, please. Ross. So in 2019, this uh, table illustrates the, the sick leave analysis for Port Young and Wisconsin University Hospital. So in 2019, we processed over 2,000 certs. Uh, there was over 72,000 hours lost due to sick leave. And our absenteeism rate was running at 4.1%, which is higher than the national average. So there's definitely improvement um, to be measured in automating this. There's also um, the KPI, the percentage of staff returning from absence per month was running at 68%. So next slide, please, Ross. So the expected outcomes that we see in automating the sick leave process across both sites is that we will see an increase in our efficiencies and it will save time and money. And uh, we also see that it will require fewer WTEs to work on the managing sick leave process and staff can be allocated to working on more meaningful tasks. 
um, we'll see an avoidance of delays, human error, and the elimination of staff overpayments. We'll also see an improvement in the compliance in, in all absentees and KPIs for both hospitals. Um, but also, we'll also see hopefully an employee job satisfaction and employee engagement will be boosted as we'll be able to allocate staff to more meaningful projects in their time. Okay, thanks, Ross. William Marisa, thanks a million, and uh, thank you for jumping in. It took short notice as well. I think that um, having worked with you and the team on, you know, beginning this journey of robotics process automation across the organisation, you can really see how complex what you would think something was very straight about, you know, um, recording absenteeism. Um, but obviously, from looking at this process and a very complicated diagram that you've given there, I was <laughs> scratching my head trying try, try to follow the, follow the flow. But it just yeah. goes to show the, the amount of you know man and woman hours that is used in yeah. in, in a very uh, monotonous process. I'm sure for a lot of the team. Yeah. So to be able to introduce robotic process automation, which I believe the team are in the early stages of doing, and many of you committed to the training to support a, you know a, a community of, of excellence um, with our partners, um, Kevin Kelly, who I should mention in the health business services. So it's been tremendous work today. Anyways, and we really look forward to seeing the, the the benefits from that project, not just from a, from a, a cost saving of you know um, you know kind of man and woman power and time being saved in the office to free you up to do the tasks that you're probably supposed to be um, more prioritising, and um, but just the the cost benefits as well for the organisation and.